Every moment tonight, they led me to you. Every single time you look at me, I lose it too. Why don't you come sit next to me? Let things happen naturally. Cinnamon rolls for Father's Day. These are homemade cinnamon rolls. I'm excited. It's been a while. Last time I've ever made like homemade cinnamon rolls was the Pioneer Woman. Um, this is actually a different brand or different um, recipe. It's from pinchofyum.com. They're called House Favorite Cinnamon Rolls with Cream Cheese uh, Glaze. So we got our water. It says one cup of lukewarm water. And then I have a package of Rapid Rise yeast. Perfect. All right. Um, then we need to put in the rest of the ingredients. We need five cups of flour. You can already see that it's working and starting to foam up, which is perfect, which means it's active. So we need five cups of all-purpose flour. Almost three. I gotta go fill this up. I'll be right back. He's working on getting me more flour. He has to go down and dig into our 25 pounds of flour. Um, you need two teaspoons of salt. You can use an actual teaspoon measure if you want. I'm just using my hand. You need four eggs. All right, so we had almost three, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in just like a one fourth kind of thing. Okay. There's four and five. All right, push that back for a second. We need one third cup of honey. Spray your cup and it'll come right out. Right. We're gonna put it in here. This actually is a cinnamon roll brioche dough is what it says. So it'll be nice and soft and eggy, pillowy. We love brioche, so I think it'll be really good. All right. You're supposed to put two sticks or one cup of melted butter. Four eggs. One, two, three, and four. All right, so it says put all the ingredients in, and then you're going to mix with a spoon until combined. It says that it's going to be uh, messy, sticky, and loose. And delicious. I'm sure it's going to be delicious.
sure you just want to get it combined don't over mix it because that'll make your dough tough and or it's brioche want it to be nice and fluffy you can see how it's kind of already a little bit fluffy that's a yeast that I was cutting things out like I had cut out gluten for a whole year and I added it back in and then I was like oh I think yeast is my problem which honestly I think I have an intolerance to both gluten and yeast but it's kind of one of those things that like when I've been eating it and I've ate it like every meal like I don't really I notice some discomfort every once in a while but not really and it's one of those things that I'm gonna live my life you know not cutting anything out. Yes, I probably have a little bit of an intolerance to them, but um, I like making stuff like this. And gluten stuff, uh, gluten-free stuff is so expensive. Um, you know, Jeffrey always, he always says, you know, sometimes when you're eating like that, you just don't notice. You know, and then when you cut stuff out, then you really notice. So, um, yeah, I've been doing good. You can, it's really kind of that sticky, glutinous. Um, situation but it's all mixed together now so now what we're gonna do is it says to um let's see cover loosely with plastic wrap or a towel and let it rest at room temperature for one to two hours until puffed and doubled in size so i actually have a tea towel if you don't have a tea towel they said you could use um saran wrap loosely or um you could do other stuff i'm gonna clean this up real quick so this is gonna sit covered i'm gonna set my timer for two hours i have enough time where i can do two hours it's not gonna do anything and i'd rather have the max ability to puff up that i can so that's what we're doing and then it says um put the bowl in the fridge covered to store at least overnight so the dough has time to chill and become easier to handle. When you're ready for rolls, remove the dough and cut the whole dough ball into thirds. Each third about a size of a grapefruit will give you a six to eight roll batch of cinnamon rolls. You use one third for this recipe and the other two thirds can be stored in a fridge or freezer. The best part about this recipe it says for freezing your dough, you can freeze extra dough balls wrapped in plastic to thaw put in fridge 24 hours before use. Once rolled out or assembled to final form, let it rest and rise at room temperature for one to two hours before baking. You can also put the individual rolls in the freezer, same thawing steps. So we're going to go ahead and let this sit for two hours. And then it says to let at least sit in the fridge overnight. So that's what we'll do. And then in the morning, um, We'll bake them up, but I will show you before I put them in the fridge tonight what the dough looks like because it's going to be cool. It's going to double in size, right? Um, and then um, tomorrow you'll add the fillings and get them assembled and put them in the oven and bake them for Jeffrey for Father's Day. Um, and like I said, I'll show you when it's ready to get stuck in the fridge. The timer has gone off. Let's see how it rolls. Oh, yes. Look at that. It fluffed up huge. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and put saran wrap over this. I'm going to put it in the fridge overnight. And I'll bring you back tomorrow morning when we make the cinnamon rolls. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to be delicious. Right. So we're making our cinnamon rolls here. Um, I got my thing. Guys, look how much that had puffed up. I'm so impressed. All right, so we're going to start with our filling. So I have one stick of softened butter. Okay, so that's what I do. Um, take your casserole dish and your butter wrapper. And I'm going to butter your dish. Sorry if I'm being quiet or Jeffrey's still sleeping. We ended up sleeping in the living room because the kids fell asleep in our bed watching a movie last night. So, I'm gonna let him sleep in his 
5.57 in the morning, so I'll let him get as much sleep as he can for Father's Day. All right, dish is buttered. Um, the recipe calls for two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm doing a little bit different. I'm doing a full stick of melted butter. I like a lot of filling in mine though. Um, it says a fourth a cup of white sugar, and then it says a fourth a cup of brown sugar. I'm going to do half a cup of just white sugar. Um, I'm just going to use a one fourth cup, but I'll do two. There's one. Okay. There's two. And then it says a teaspoon of cinnamon. I think I'm gonna need a bigger bowl. I don't think that's gonna be big enough. You know what? I'm gonna do a full cup of sugar. And then cinnamon, they say a teaspoon. I'm gonna go probably more than a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Go as much as my heart desires. You could follow their instructions if you want. We like cinnamon, so make sure you guys can see it up. Probably that much. I said it's probably almost a fourth a cup. All right, then I'm gonna take. I could have probably softened it just a little bit more. I'll let it get a little bit warmer. I could have probably done 15 seconds on my butter, but I didn't wanna we're ahead and we're ready too much. Usually 10 seconds, 20 seconds is good, but I don't want to get too melted. They say to melt it completely, but I like it softer. They make almost like a cream. It just goes on better, in my opinion. All right, so there's that. I'm going to put some flour. I'm going to take my ring off. Some flour on board here. So it says this ball can be like in thirds. You're supposed to make it into three. So, oh my. Ooh, this is crazy. So I'll probably do. I'll so try to take it out. Very sticky dough. Get into a little bit more ball. And it says that it can go into thirds. And it says you freeze so that you can freeze the dough you're not using. So this is the dough I won't be using. So I'll just freeze that. But for right now, I'm just going to set it aside or dealing with the rest of our dough. Alright, 
So got your rolling pin. You're going to put some flour in your rolling pin. Probably your hands too, because the dough is a little sticky. It's okay, you're gonna make a mess. We're gonna roll this out into a rectangle. <clears throat> it says you're going to want them a rectangle a little bigger than the size of your 913 about a half inch thick We're not kidding, this is a very sticky dough. Keep that in mind. It's okay, you're just gonna have to flatter your rolling pin really good. I feel like these plastic ones don't hold the flour as good as the wood though too. can see how it's springy like that. Maybe some nice and risen. Okay. I'm gonna call that good, about half an inch. Let's see if that got a little bit more. Spread it out. I need to use my hands at this point. It's okay, they're already messy from everything else. Okay. We're going to take this and slowly. Start. Oh, good morning. Happy Father's Day, Jeffrey. Thank you. It's delicious. The dough is very sticky, so I think this is going to be perfect. Okay, put that in the sink for me. I make you love. So put it in the sink? Yes. The dough is very sticky, so make sure you're flouring. This is the first time I've used this recipe. I've told you guys that. I forgot to take my meds last night, so my stomach's a little sour this morning. Did you take them this morning? I did take them this morning. I didn't take last night's this morning, but I took them this morning. Did you also have a little? Yeah, oh, he already went. Oh, I don't know. Just do this. He needs his meds, though. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and throw down just a little bit more flour. Right here. Let 
be super careful cutting on um, here, but you could use um, floss. I've seen people do that. I'm just gonna cut them really carefully. So probably, would you say half inch or inch, Jeffrey? Inch. Inch. Okay, use my measure. <laughs> An inch. <laughs> it does, sticky. Pan and put the ones that I've already cut in there. These look so good. You guys can kind of see them over there. It's okay if they're not all exactly the same size because of the stick, right? The best of models don't look fancy. <laughs> I'll show you them when I'm all done cutting them and they're in the pan. If my butter would have been softer, the filling would be sticking in a lot better. That's okay. Let me stick a little bit of flour on top here because it's sticking in my fingers. Hey babe, if you could get the plastic wrap down for me, that'd be great. Alright, we've got our last ones here. Oh my goodness, now we have to plastic wrap them. They're gonna sit for an hour and 15 minutes to rise up a little bit more before we bake them.
for an hour and 15 minutes. And then, <clears throat> to stick your other dough in the saran wrap. Sticky dough. Like I said, you just have to pull it out. It says once. Um, just freeze it and then let it thaw out for 24 hours. I suppose you should write in the bag what it is, huh? That'd be helpful. <laughs> Yesterday's date on it since I made it yesterday. So 6 22. I will bring you guys. Oh, here. There they are, all wrapped up. I will bring you guys back after they've been sitting for an hour and 15 minutes, show you what they look like, and then we'll pop them in the oven. Um, also, your oven needs to be preheated to 350 degrees, so I might get that going while we're waiting for the hour and 15 minutes. We technically have 18 more minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and put them in the oven because the kids are whining about being hungry. <laughs> so, uh, it's only, uh, what time is it, like 7? It is 7.15 in the morning. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get these in the oven. Um, they're supposed to bake for 20 minutes and then we'll put the glaze that's supposed to go on top of them. I'm going to go ahead and set up my cream cheese cause the cream cheese has to get softened, um, for the glaze, but we'll get these in the oven. Oh my goodness. They puffed up. They look so delicious. Oh my goodness. Where's my breakfast? What are you guys going to do? <laughs> The kids are laughing because these ones are curling up and out. I think it's super cute. They're like pigtails. They are. All right, we're going to go ahead and make the frosting too on top. Here, I have one block of softened cream cheese. I'm doubling the recipe because the fact of I made two batches of the cinnamon rolls. So it says one third cup of powdered sugar. So I'll do two one third cups. And then it says one teaspoon of vanilla, so I'll do two. One, two. And then you're supposed to put two tablespoons or more of milk if needed. You can measure, I'm just gonna put a splash in and add more splashes if need be. Okay, so we've got our delicious cream cheese frosting. We're just gonna go ahead and, oh my. These are gonna be marvelous. Excited, Jeffrey? What? Excited? I'm pumped. Me too.
take our knife and spread it over top. Some of it's getting down in there. Oh yeah. Falling in those cracks. product looking so amazing father's day breakfast all plated up they're super light and fluffy these are delicious all right i should have had to make this before on my channel but i'm going to show again because they're super delicious and it's father's day well tomorrow's father's day but you get the gist um we're making banana bread brownies jeffrey loves banana bread brownies um and we're yeah they're just super delicious <laughs> um so the first thing you're going to do is we have our oven preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, in this bowl, we're going to mix our sugar, eggs, butter, and sour cream. So you need granulated sugar. You are going to need one and a half cups of sugar. I have a half cup. So it'll be three servings of the half cup. I just realized it's the first time for making them not gluten free. I know. <laughs> Jeff is excited. Not gluten free. Okay, so your sugar, your eggs. You need two eggs. There's one. And two. Right, and then you're gonna do a stick of butter that is softened. It's all in there, there we go. I'm gonna set this aside and I will grease my pan with that. All right, so butter, you need half a cup of that. Did that, eggs, sour cream. Sour cream, you need um, one cup of sour cream. Uh, I have one cup left in here. I can tell you that that's what it is. I'm not even going to dirty my measuring cup to measure that. I'm just going to throw it all in there. Good thing I don't think we needed sour cream for anything this rest of the week. <laughs> We're gonna cream those together. So I'm gonna get my little handheld. Push this stuff off to the side a little bit so I can even get in there. There we go. This one? Spray for you? This is baking soda. I don't have baking soda up on the ingredients. Sprayer? Huh? Sprayer? Uh, no, because I'm gonna butter it. I got the butter. Oh, that's right. That's right. Do you need baking soda? Yeah. So now that we have that together, you are going to then add in mashed banana and vanilla. So I have vanilla extract. You're going to put in two teaspoons of vanilla. And I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to mash my nanners. You need three bananas for this. There's one. If you see splatter in my bowl, it is from when I <laughs> lifted the thing up. It is not from anything else. third banana. I'm gonna take a fork and mash your banana. Mash it, 
These are nice and soft. Love this. I was gonna make banana bread, but I'm like, you know what? It's, ooh, the end I don't want in there. That's a little. I was gonna make banana bread, but I was like, you know what? Father's Day is here and Jeffrey loves banana bread brownies. And what more of a perfect Father's Day gift than food. <laughs> Better than going out to eat and spending a bajillion dollars. Okay. Those are all mashed up. So we got this mixture. And throw your bananas in. And then we're gonna mix it in. Now we're gonna do our dry ingredients. So you're gonna put flour in, you need two cups of flour. I have my half cup here, so I'll put four servings of a half cup in there. There's one. Two. Three. We're supposed to put a pinch of salt in. And then you need a teaspoon of baking soda. Or is it half? I'm gonna assume it's one. I for some reason I don't have it on the recipe. We're just gonna do one. So that's all together. We're gonna mix it up. I'm gonna kind of stir it real quick so flour doesn't sploosh everywhere. All right, so we have that all mixed up. I have got a nine by 13 pan here and we're going to take it. We have the um, wrapper from our butter and we're gonna grease our pan. You could use baking spray if you don't wanna use your wrapper. Might as well utilize it though. and pour our batter in. Spread it out. You're gonna put this in the oven at 375 for 25 minutes. I will show you when it is out of the oven, but I can tell you it's gonna be delicious. All right, we have two minutes left on our brownies in the oven. So now we have to make our brown butter frosting. Cause you're gonna put these on, or the frosting on when it's still warm, not hot, but warm. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get that going. So you need one stick or a half cup of butter. And you're gonna cook this till it's brown. Um, I'm gonna give you this hint. Um, I'm not going to film this whole thing because it's gonna take a while to get it to be brown butter. When it gets melted down and it's close to that point, I will show you, but watching butter melt is pretty pretty boring. <laughs> so we'll be back when it's almost brown oh butter. Oh my goodness. It is out of the oven looking so delicious. I'm making the frosting now. This is gonna cool while the frosting is getting made and uh, we'll show you when we put the frosting on. Okay, so this is almost getting there. You can see it's bubbling up. We're almost to the point where it's brown butter. You wanna get it just that golden consistency. Sometimes when you get those bubbles, it's hard to see. See, it's not completely golden to the point where I want it yet. But we're getting there. You're gonna stir this. 
keep going. I will show you the consistency it is at right before I add the other stuff. I have this right where I want it. You can see there's like that darker, you can, that's kind of hard with the bubbles. There you go. You saw how dark that is. Almost like a click. You're almost making iced tea, but not like you don't want it that dark, but like that perfect kind of golden neat. And it'll get this nice nutty tone smell. is we're going to add in our brown sugar. You're going to put in three cups of brown sugar. There's one. Well, that's a half, not a cup. There's, there's completely one. Brown butter frosting is so delicious. And then you're supposed to put a tablespoon of milk in. There's a teaspoon, I don't know. I'm just putting a little bit in. For some reason, I don't have it written on my recipe, but you put milk in. So we'll just add it till it looks right. Just a split. <coughs> It's a battered trigger up my throat. Ooh. Just a splash. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put the vanilla in now. You want half a teaspoon, so like half a cap full of vanilla. <clears throat> and then put another cup worth in. Take the milk, put a dash. I'd say about a teaspoon each time. You're gonna do it about three times. Perfect. Look at that. Oh, yes. Going on butter frosting. Look how smooth, decadent, and rich that is. Yum. Now we have that done. This is still a little bit warm. Pull that forward so you guys can see. Spatula here. Oh my guys. Oh my, that looks so good. Okay, so now 
We're gonna take it, you're going to put it on top of the cake here. Oh no, what little is left in the thing for me to have. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. All right, so now you're gonna take your frosting, you're gonna spread it out over your brownies. And you want it a little bit warm because this frosting is thicker. So if it's warm, it'll help you to be able to put it, you know, spread it on the on the brownies. I don't know why they call it brownies essentially because I don't know, it's more cakey. I think it's because the way you, it's in a big pan like that. Yeah, well, maybe. And they cut in the yeah, bars. The brownie. Delicious is what they are. The frosting is what really makes it and sets it apart. Gosh, it looks professional. Look at me go. Look at me go. So now we're going to actually, you know what? I'm going to do this tomorrow because if I put the foil over it, I don't want it to get ruined. Do you think it would get ruined if I put it on now? Possibly, or the heat from it might. You might melt it. I'm going to wait to do this tomorrow. I'm going to write Happy Father's Day on there with a sparkly gel red icing, um, and I'll bring you back for that. But now, now close up look of how delicious these look and professional, if I do say so myself. Um, I can't wait to right, show you guys. We're going to write Happy Father's Day with red sparkly icing. seen better but it works happy father's day Woo it looks like on the inside that is what it looks like it is so delicious all right so we are making sausage cream cheese tortellini for jeffrey for father's day uh, i have a uh, i have a i have a cookie sheet lined with aluminum foil i'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some spray crescent rolls this is a quick and easy idea if you want to make something that's kind of like garlic bread, but not exactly garlic bread. And most people generally, I mean, a good chunk of people have some kind of crescent roll that they can get or have on hand. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to treat them like regular crescent rolls. You're going to take them and you're going to roll them up. I have my sausage cooking in my pan browning up and then I have water heating up for the tortellini I'm not going to show you guys really too much of that process because it's pretty boring don't have to be perfect, just roll them up and place them on the sheet. I'm going to wash my hands real quick and then I'll come back and do the rest of the stuff. Okay, now you're going to take your cooking spray again and you want to spray just the top of your rolls and that's to give it sticky. You're going to take some garlic powder and you're just going to sprinkle lightly on top of each of the rolls. I'm going to take some parsley flake and do the same thing. Give it a little bit of color. I 
And then take some Parmesan cheese. And then sprinkle just a little bit of that on top. All right, and then we're gonna bake these at 325. Oh, it should be at 350. Do I freeze that at 325? That's okay, it won't take long. 350 for nine to 12 minutes. All right, so we have our sausage browned up for the sausage cream cheese for lean. Um, now what you do, this is Jimmy Dean sausage. It's a pound. Usually for a dish like this, we do half a pound, but we just did a pound because it's special for Father's Day. You want a little piece? I'm leaving the grease. Ooh, I just threw some back there. You want it? <laughs> No sauce, left, no meat left behind in this house. <laughs> um, I didn't drain this because that's honestly flavor. There's not a lot of grease there. Um, but what you do is you take a block of cream cheese and we're gonna melt that into the sausage. And you melt it. You melt it. Yeah. And then we're gonna take our I've showed how to make this before on my channel. It is so delicious. If you've never tried it, definitely try this recipe. You'll not be disappointed. Also, I was going to film Father's Day lunch, but we ended up getting Burger King because we had to run to Walmart to get a tarp for our pool. We just have like a little inflatable pool for the kids and we wanted to put a tarp underneath it. And we thought we had one that was the right size, but it's not the right size. So we had to go get a tarp and so we're like, let's just grab lunch while we're out. It costs almost as much as we went to like a fancy restaurant. <laughs> Should have ate at home. Yeah. Try going somewhere fancy, but that's okay. I don't like going out to eat on Father's Day because it's always so busy. Yeah. And things are pricier when you eat out. And I feel like I can make better food at home most of the time. Sure. What'd you do as a photo? My water is boiling. I'm going to go ahead and throw in the Great Value Cheese Tourling. I'm not using this whole bag. I'm just going to use a little bit of it. I'm going to throw it here one. So when your timer down low goes that off. Okay, one more minute. All right, so you're going to melt this in with your sausage. I'm going to go ahead and turn the temp down on that. Oh, I just threw more. So you go, Jeffrey. <laughs> Oh. Making a mess. Wouldn't be Jesse cooking or baking if I was not making a mess. Alright, need some new pans. These ones are all warped and cold. scratches on them. <laughs> Been well used. Because we eat at home so much. There. How dare we? How dare we? So. Fresh out of the oven, looking delicious. Look at Daddy and Mama. Mama. All right, so that is well melted. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your sauce. I'm going to use Francisco Rinaldi garlic on onion sauce. it in together Ooh, yes gets this rosy pink color to it it's creamy delicious hey babe can you drain the tortellini I 
and because it's Father's Day, I'm gonna go ahead and throw, ooh, throw some fresh red pepper flake into it instead ooh. of having Jeffrey put it on top. Mix that in. If you don't like heat, totally leave it out. Jeffrey likes it. Get that. out of the kitchen. <laughs> Jeffrey likes it, so. It's Father's Day. We're doing what he likes. Everything? Not everything. I don't want to watch Star Wars anyways, but whatever. I don't know if you want to pour some sauce in. That's what I do. I'm weird. I pour some sauce in, then I put like a alternate. Oh, okay. You're weird. All right. So we got our noodle here and our sauce. sauce into your noodles and stir it in with your pasta and ta-da sausage cream cheese tortellini oh yes so delicious we will show you when it is all plated up it is all plated up looking phenomenal the roll Sausage cream cheese tortellini. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some parm cheese on top of mine. But this is Father's Day dinner. Mm -hmm.